Hey guys and gals, Darren from Kegland here. We're here to do a little bit of a brew day video. Uh, what we want to do is brew some beer, but we also really want to highlight how to use the Bluetooth temperature probe in conjunction with the Gen 4 Bruzilla to get super accurate mash temperatures really easily. This has got a profile running and we'll talk about the profiles in a little bit. Um, we've reached strike temperature. We've already added the brewing salts. We're using RO water, which luckily we have on tap here at Keglan. Uh, so now it's time to dough in. So we've mashed in. We've just got to give it a really good stir. All right, so that's been doughed in. Now, when you mash, you always want to use the top screen. That's for a bunch of reasons. Largely, when you're recirculating, this will stop grains from getting sucked back down the recirc arm, which is probably the biggest reason people using this type of all-in-one brewery get blocked pumps. So we put the top screen on. And now we get our Bluetooth probe and we stick it in the hole designed to hold it. This is the tricky bit. All right, guys, so we're at our strike temperature. We've mashed in. We've put the temperature probe from the RAP Bluetooth thermometer through the hole in the top screen. Now, what we need to do is go to settings, go to the temperature sensor and change it from the built-in to the wrapped temp probe. Straight away, we'll see that the temperature of the elements, which was quite warm after doing in, has dropped to the actual mash temperature. Now, we hold the back button to go to the next profile step, which is our mash stem. Uh, once the step's been confirmed, we just follow the instructions on screen to start the duration timer. We're gonna ignore that warning because we will get up to mash temp pretty quick. So guys, um, so the mash is well underway. What we've done is we've switched our controller so that we're using the wrapped Bluetooth probe as the temperature sensor. So if we have a look at the display, we can see the elements are a bit warmer than that but the mash temperature, 63.4, we're aiming for 63, so absolutely perfect. Using the Bluetooth sensor means you're measuring the mash temperature from the mash, which is fantastic. However, you need a bit of control. So what we have is this setting. This is the allowed sensor differential. You can see it's currently two degrees. What that is, is the allowed temperature difference between the set point temperature and the element temperature. That means you can control how much hotter the, the elements and therefore the work will get when you're brewing. And that's fantastic. So when you just want to maintain a temperature, you can set the sensor difference to a low temperature, two degrees at the moment. Uh, looks like we might have gone a bit higher, probably stuffed around with that but we're getting great controlled mash temperature at the moment. What we're gonna do later on when we want to increase the mash temperature is we'll increase the allowed sensor difference, which means we'll heat up the mash faster, but we'll still get to the right temperature because we're controlling it with the Bluetooth probe. All right, guys, so what we're doing today is we're brewing a Vienna Lager. Um, Vienna Lager, look, with modern malts, you don't really need to do a step mash, but it's fun to do, and it highlights how powerful the temperature control is with this combination. So we've done our first rest at 63 degrees, and now we're going to do a second rest for 30 minutes, both steps, at 70 degrees. This is all baked into a profile that we've set up. Um, we'll talk through that later. So what we've got at the moment is we've finished our first rest at 63, and we need to increase the temperature to 70 degrees. So what we've done is in the profile, you can program all of this in. So we've changed the allowed sensor difference to make it a bit warmer so we can get up to that next step a bit faster. So when you set up your profile, or you can do it on the device manually during your brew day, if you want to increase the temperature, it's a good idea to increase the allowed sensor difference. So for this step, while we raise it from 63 to 70, we have increase the allowed sensor difference to six degrees. So we wanna reach a temperature of 70 degrees, but to get there, the elements can heat up to 76. 
that doesn't affect the mash temperature. It takes a long time for a mass, which has a big thermal mass, to get up in temperature. What it does mean is we'll get to our 70 degrees faster and we'll know when we get there because we're measuring the temperature from the mash. We'll be back. All right, guys, so we've finished the first rest at 63 and we're going for the second rest at 70 degrees. This is just a pretty simple step mash that's appropriate to a lager. We're brewing a Vienna lager today. So when we want to raise the temperature instead of maintaining the temperature, we change the settings. So we increase the allowed sensor differential. So you see this is increased to currently six degrees. Um, and we also want to increase the power a wee bit. That basically just puts more power and more heat while we recirculate, which is going to bring the temperature up faster. Um, the element temperature, it's got a sensor differential of six degrees, so the elements can go up to 76 when the target point is 70 degrees, but it doesn't matter because it's controlling the temperature with the Bluetooth probe. All it means is we get there faster. I think we might have just hit temperature. So we can see now that the temperature has been reached. This is all built into the profile. So automatically the power drops back down. And if we check our sensor differential, we'll see that's gone back down to two degrees. Um, what we want to do now is just maintain the temperature at 70. We don't need to put a lot of power in. We don't want to have a big sensor differential. We're just going to complete the mesh step now, hands off. All right, guys, so we've finished the second mash rest, and so we want to do a quick mash out now. Mash out, you normally do about 75 degrees for 10 minutes or so. What a mash out does is it completely stops any sugar conversion, but heating up your grains also helps when you're lautering, um, when you're sparging, sorry, because you'll, you'll just get more sugars rinsed out, you'll get higher efficiency. So. As before, we're trying to increase the temperature, and quite dramatically now, we want to go from 70 to 75 degrees. So while we're bringing the temperature to up to mash out, we can increase the power again. We were at about 30% for the mash step. We're now back up to about 60%. And we've increased the sensor differential. So the sensor differential is the difference between the set point temperature and the element temperature. So that's now at 10 degrees. What that means is we've got a decent bit of power going through here. We're going to get up to our mash temperature quite quickly. Um, we normally get up to mash out temp in about 10, 15 minutes. What you'll find, um, if you don't increase the element temperature when you're getting to a mash out, it'll take forever to get there because your grain has so much thermal mass. But if you're not measuring the temperature with something like the Bluetooth probe, You'll, you'll just never know. Your elements will get to 75, you'll think you're done, but your actual mash temperature is probably only 65, 66 degrees. Um, we'll come back when we're at temp. So guys, as we can see, um, we're nearly at our mash out temperature of 75 degrees. It's been, oh, I haven't been catching, watching about 10 minutes maybe. Um, you can see, because we've got a sensor differential of 10 degrees, the element temperature is quite a bit higher. So the element temperature will keep going up. It can get to 85 degrees because we've got a 10 degree sensor differential. What that means is we're putting more power and more heat into the mash until we get to 75 degrees. But our set point and our control from the Bluetooth probe is going to cut things off automatically at 75. It means we're getting to mash temperature accurately and far more quickly than if we were not using the Bluetooth probe. All right, so we're just about at mash out temperature. Um, should take a little while. We should see that the elements will turn off and we'll just maintain our temperature very shortly. It's gonna automatically hold it there at 75 degrees for 10 minutes while we complete the mash out step. Once the mash out is done, it's, we're gonna stop using the Bluetooth temperature probe because um, the next step is boiling. So temperature control, we're, we're not interested in fine control anymore. We want full power, we want max heat, we just want to let her rip. Um, ah, this should tick over any second now. We can see the temperature is going up quickly. And you can also see that the element temperature is quite a bit higher than the mash temperature. Um, so we're putting a decent bit of heat into the mash 
Hence, we're getting up to our mash temperature nice and quickly. Uh, so there you go. So we've just hit 75 degrees. Um, the elements have turned off. Uh, and we're just going to hold it there for 10 minutes. All right, guys. So we're at the last stage of our draining the work into the malt pipe. The elements are on full. We're coming up to the boil. We just need to do a sparge next. Sparging is pretty simple. It's just rinsing the grains with hot water, about your mash out temperature, about 75 degrees C. Um, what that does is it get, rinses all the sugars out of the grain and brings you up to your pre-boil volume. A lot of people like to use a digi boil to get their sparge water ready to bring it up. You can just heat, heat a pot of water on the stove. Um, at Kegland, we kind of have the luxury of hot water, hot RO water at the right temperature, so we can just rinse it off directly. Um, but that's the final step before we boil. And while this is happening, you can keep your elements on full to bring your boil up. As soon as you lift the mop pipe, just speed up your brood a wee bit. All right, guys, so we're getting to the final stage of our brew day. This is just coming up to a boil. Uh, so as mentioned, we don't use the Bluetooth probe thermometer anymore. So what you want to remember is to either go into settings and switch your Brewzilla back from using the Bluetooth probe to the built-in probe, or simply turn this off. Uh, these have an automatic timeout, so when the Brewzilla stops getting a signal from the Bluetooth probe, it will automatically revert back to using the built-in probe. Either way, when you're boiling, use the built-in probe. Uh, while we come to a boil, it's probably a good time to just have a little chat about this guy. It's fantastically easy to set up and use. Um, it's only got one job. It's to measure temperature and send a Bluetooth signal. So when you get it and turn it on, within a few seconds, your Brewzilla or temperature controller or fermentation chamber, if you're using it, will automatically pick it up. So you go to your Bluetooth settings on your RAP device, you find this guy, it'll be called Wrapped Temp in a Mac number, and you select Bond to bond the Bluetooth probe with your Brewzilla. Once it's bonded, it's dead easy to use. As we've seen, all you have to do is go into settings and select to use it as your temperature sensor. A couple of other things to talk about. Um, one of the great upgrades you can make for a Brewzilla is to buy a heat exchanger dish, the HED. The heat exchanger dish fits underneath your false bottom, and the idea of the HED is it forces the flow of the wort as it's returned to come over the temperature probe at the base of the boiler. This will give you more accurate and faster temperature response from your element temperature. Now, the element temperature is, gets decoupled from your set point when you're using this guy, but obviously if you've got accurate mash temperature using the probe and you've got accurate element temperature in the Brusilla, you've got fantastically powerful and accurate temperature control, which with profiles can be completely automated on your brew day. You can basically let it do its thing, keep an eye on the pump when you're mashing, lift it up, sparge, get your boil going. It is easy and it is powerful. Hey guys, we're back. Uh, boil is well underway. Um, I've had a chance to check the numbers. We hit our pre-boil volume perfectly, 52 litres. And interestingly, we didn't get the gravity target we were going for. This is the Wolfgang Vienna Lager, which is an all-grain recipe kit from the website. Um, should have a pre-boil gravity of 1044. We actually got a little bit over 1050. Now, one of the things we've found since using the RAP Bluetooth temperature controller is you get precise temperatures from your mash. And we've found that having precise temperature control for your mash, your mash steps, and your mash out can have quite a noticeable effect on improving your efficiency. Um, which means you can use less grain, you can brew bigger beers, there is nothing but win about that. So you may or may not have noticed that when the boil started, I did not actually add hops, although the recipe calls for 22 grams of Columbus for a 60 minute boil. The reason for that is I'm not going to chill the wort. Instead, I'm going to transfer it while hot directly into a cube and just wait for it to cool down. 
hot cubing is a fantastic way to speed up your brew day um, and also save water here in Australia. You just, chilling always uses a ton of water. If you don't have a tank, it's probably a wee bit wasteful. What that means though, is the wort's going to stay hot for a lot longer than it would normally. So you need to allow for that with your bitterness. Um, so as a sort of rule of thumb, I like to add my bittering hops with about half the amount of time that the recipe calls for. So this boil has been going for 30 minutes. Um, it calls for 22 grams of Columbus hops. This is 25 grams and close enough is good enough. So I'm gonna chuck these in now. And there we go. We'll be back in 30 minutes, put the sucker in a cube, and we are done. All right, guys. So the boil has ended, the profile has ended, and we are ready to transfer this into a hot cube so we don't have to chill it. Uh, pretty simple. You do not need to sanitize the cubes. You just need to make sure they are clean because this wort is going in there at 100 degrees. It will be hot enough to sanitize as it goes in. Uh, only takes a couple of minutes, quick and easy process. All right, guys, so that's it. We've got two cubes or kegs full of delicious Vienna Lager. Um, it's been a fun day. Thank you for joining me. I really hope that's helped uh, explain how to use the wrapped Bluetooth probe with the Bruzilla a little bit better and how that can improve your brewing life. Look, we, we had a good time today. We really want to do some more brew videos. If there's any particular styles you would like to see us brew, please let us know. Uh, so, happy brewing. Cheers.